A pregnant mother and her boyfriend were mistakenly murdered by members of a dangerous drug cartel. One of the men charged could be back on the streets this year, but how is that possible? Well, we have an update in today's True Crime Chronicles. Lanoshka Torres and Luis Campos were two young teens in love. They were living in Dallas, Texas, getting ready to become new parents. <laughs> My sister was a good girl. She was about to be a mom. It was January 6th, 2007. The couple drove to Oak Cliff to pick up Luis's car at a mechanic's home. They never made it back home that night. She did not deserve this. When Lanashka and Luis showed up for their car, they were kidnapped, tortured, and beaten for days. Did she plead for her baby's life? It was a case of mistaken identity. Three members of a dangerous Mexican drug cartel mistook Lanoshka and Luis as a couple who had stolen cash and drugs from the cartel's lead hitman, Nicolas Menores. Nearly a month later, police found Luis, Lanoshka, and her five-month-old baby's bodies dumped off a bridge. My first granddaughter that I never met. I just met, met her for the son of a picture. Dallas detectives botched the investigation and evidence in this case, allowing two of the men to take plea deals. Frank Estrella, who dumped the bodies, was let out on parole in 2017 after only serving five years behind bars. It's just kind of crazy that he can keep on with his life. And now the main hitman, Nicholas Monores, who was sentenced to 15 years, could be released as early as this year. Doesn't make sense in my head that they can say, oh yeah, let's make a deal with you, but you didn't do a deal with us. Jorge Guzman Banda is the only one serving a life sentence. As for the others, the Torres family struggles to think these men will be back on the streets soon because of a botched investigation. This is not fair. It's not fair. And earlier, Tori, Al, and Lindsay spoke with a reporter who's been covering the case for over a decade. Take a look. We're joined by senior crime and justice reporter Rebecca Lopez from WFAA in Dallas, Texas. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Detectives admit they botched parts of the investigation. I want to know exactly when went wrong and did they ever take responsibility because this makes my skin crawl. Yeah, the detectives never took responsibility. The DA's office, though, obviously knew there was something wrong when they went to go look at the interrogation tapes. And there, my sources say they never really said, but my sources say that there was coercion and there was also issues with how the Miranda rights were read mm. or not read, actually. And so what is really galling is that the main guy, the guy that was one of the most violent cartel members, he only gets 15 years. They had to plea bargain. The family didn't even realize that there was a plea bargain until they got to court and then they, they realized then that he was going to get a 15 year sentence and they weren't going to get to go to trial. And he's the main guy that led uh, the kidnapping, the torture of this pregnant girl and her boyfriend. Oh my gosh. He was the main cartel violent guy. Wow. It, you know, after yeah. you saying, I can't believe I even have to ask this question, but Nicholas is eligible for parole soon. Ugh. How likely is it that he'll be released this year? And how are we even talking about this? How is this even a possibility? He'll get out because of that plea bargain. It was 15 years. Now, here's the only um, thing that the family has some comfort in. He is a Mexican national, so he will most likely be extradited back to Mexico. Mm -hmm. But he is known to come back and forth across the border. He was one of the main hit guys for the Mexican drug cartel called the Gulf Cartel. And so though th he is going to, at one point, he will get out. There is no doubt about it. He only got a 15-year sentence, and he is done with it and he will be released. Ugh, God. And Rebecca, it's now been more yeah. than 10 years. So how are the victims' families still fighting for justice? 
you know, here's the sad part. They will never get the justice that they deserve because of how this case was handled from the very beginning when DPD didn't take this case seriously, the Dallas Police Department, to the very end when these uh, confessions were messed up and this case was messed up. So they'll never really get any kind of justice. The only justice they get is when we do stories like this and we uh, let their legacies live on of Luis and Lenorska, this beautiful young couple that was getting ready to have a baby. It is important to note, though, that the two detectives that uh, botched this case, they're no longer with the Dallas Police Department. They retired. DPD had to go back and look at all of their cases to make sure that there wasn't any, there weren't any other issues. Um, and so they're still in the process, actually, of looking through all of those, uh, those cases that they had in the past as well. Wow. But this family, they'll never really get the justice they deserved. Wow. Well, thank you for keeping the ball rolling on this, because at least someone is keeping that legacy, and we depend on people like you. Thank you, Rebecca. To read more on this case, please visit WFAA.com. You can also learn more in a new podcast episode out now. Just search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. Again, Rebecca, thank you so much. We'll be right back.